me, Mark Clark, Mike, I'm sitting at her now, now I'm five and started now that she's in this world of beautiful form and, you know, fighting. Now, 20 years later, I'm still doing what I love and I've made it to the top of, um, you know, my journey. And it's just continuing from here. So for me, martial arts is love. Hi, I'm Dan Cox. I'm here with Tisha Torres. Um, got a big fight coming up in uh, Mexico on the main card. I'm so excited to have her on. Tisha, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you guys for having me on. I appreciate it. It's great to go and fight already. So, you know, you hear so much about the climate uh, over there in Mexico where you're at, and um, a lot of fighters struggle with that. How has it been for you since you've gotten there to, to acclimate to that climate? For me, I've been here for a week now. It's just getting better and better with each day. I've done some altitude training, um, you know, in the camps, and then we went to El Nevado de Peluca, which are some mountains, and we went to the pyramids. So I got to see some different types of altitude, and um, I think I, I'm acclimating well and um, ready for next Saturday. And I know you're ready for next Saturday. I have had the privilege to um, have an exclusive with you, with you and watch you train. And I'm excited to get that out. But you know, uh, teacher, you are you're one of those fan favorite girls that if, I, since since your days in uh, in Invicta. I mean, you know, you have tallied up some some victories over the best uh, fighters out there. You know. Um, from everyone from Rose uh, to Paige Van Zandt. I mean, people might forget that, you know, Paige is getting all this publicity and everything. Um, I think it's misplaced, but, you know, so you you, you are a killer. I mean, you're, you're five and oh, you've got all the decisions, but, you know, I, I know exactly what you bring to the table. I do, and I can tell you, it's not decision fighting. Um, now, you're going up against Angela Killhill, right? Uh, she's a striker, Muay Thai. Everybody knows she's got a little bit of length, um, but uh, she's 2-0. Oh, and uh, I'm curious, what do you think the biggest, the biggest uh, thing you're going to have to look out for her in, in this fight? What, what's the biggest weapon maybe that she brings? I know she's a Muay Thai striker. Um, it's obviously it's her striking, you know, her elbows and knees and her distance. But, um, you know, uh, she comes from a different type of um, stand-up background. I come from the karate, kickboxing, boxing type background. So I think it's going to be a fun matchup. I think she's going to want to strike with me. and Maybe she'll want to try some new things out. And I know I want to try some new things out. So I think it's going to be a great fight, a tough fight. But overall, I think I'm going to be better in every you know, aspect of the fight. Yeah, now you, you have been uh, competing. Obviously, she's got two fights, uh, professional fights. Um, you've got uh, a little bit more experience, I'd say, and your competition level that you fought is just on another level. Um, do you see that as being a big advantage for you coming into this fight, your experience and the quality of opponents that you've uh, fought? Uh, I don't know if it's a big advantage. I definitely think it's a, a type of advantage. You know, I've gotten to fight some of the best girls in the world and uh, feel what it feels like to get hit by them, taken down by them. So I, I don't think she does anything different from any of the other girls. Um, I think she's just as talented, you know, anything can happen in a fight. But um, I, it's not something I've never seen before. She's not someone who I look at and say, like, wow, you know, like, damn, that girl has something special. I mean, she's talented, but I, I don't think it's anything I haven't seen before. Right, and I mean, let's be honest, at this level, when you, when you reach the elite of elite, everyone is dangerous. So every, every opponent is, is dangerous. Um, I, I was just looking around and I was checking fighters and I was looking at the uh, wins and losses. This win, if you come out of this uh, with the win, and I'm pretty confident that's what's happening, where do you see the future for Tisha? Because you're right up there, I mean, banging at the door for a title shot. Yeah, I think with this win, um, uh, I, I would want another win after it, you know, two more wins and then a title shot, I think I'd be deserving at that point. But anything can happen at this time, you know, uh, Jessica Penne and uh, Joanna Champion are fighting the week after me, and she's number three, fighting for the title, I'm number five, so I can see it coming, you know, with a win at, over Angela Hill. But you never know what's going to happen, you never know what Sean Shelby has in mind. 
you know, uh, sometimes you think you're going to get a matchup and you don't get it. I never thought I'd be fighting Angela Hill right now, and that's what I was given. So, um, just taking it one step at a time right now, my championship fight is Angela Hill. Because I have to beat her in order to keep my spot in order to, you know, get closer and closer to that belt. Now, you have, uh, haven't had a fight in a while, and it, I'm curious, would you like to fight more often, or is this something that you took time off from your last fight? Um, you know, because I see, it seems like the, the natural progression, you'd want to have two fights, maybe three fights in a year if you were healthy. Um, you know, is that something that's out of your control, or is that was your choice? No, it was most definitely, no, it was most definitely I would have never stayed out six months to fight. But um, it just so happened that they wanted me in the Latin market here in Mexico because of my, you know, ethnicity. And uh, I I'm more than happy and honored to be a part of, you know, UFC Mexico. But I did want to fight before for now. So uh, given a win and, you know, injury-free, I'd like to be back in within, you know, eight weeks, two months, get a another fight scheduled. You know, because it it we do only get paid when we fight. And um, it it's not cool to me to only fight once a year or twice a year. I'm used to fighting more than that. But uh, I'd like three or four fights a year, and I'd be happy with that. Yeah, because, I mean, it, not just financially, I mean, staying sharp. If you're injury-free, I, I know you as a competitor. As a matter of fact, I could watch you as the most fierce competitor, I can say, that I've been able to be up close with and watch them actually train and work. Um, so I'm sure that you would want that next title shot. And I, I spoke of you beating like Rose, uh, uh, you know, and Invicta and stuff, uh, Paige, Van Zandt. These are girls that are getting a lot of attention. Um, does that uh, necessarily bother you, uh, you know, as a person? Because, you know, you, you've beaten these these uh, fighters, and um, in my opinion, you deserve that that light. Um, would you like to maybe get in there with one of those girls and, um, you know, prove your point again after you take care of this opponent, obviously. Uh, not necessarily. I, I don't need to fight them again. You've already beaten them, but it, it gives me the opportunity to, uh, you know, fight someone like Paige again. I, I'm sure I would take it just because um, of, you know, all the hype she's getting and stuff. But like I said, I, I want to get closer and closer to the belt. And taking fights like um, Paige, I don't think it does anything for my career besides, you know, maybe getting some new fans and, you know, derail her hype. I, I want to fight the girls that are ahead of me. No disrespect to, you know, Paige. She's doing well and she's know, evolved, and I've evolved since then, it's been maybe two years since we fought, but, um, you know, like I said, I want to go for that belt, so I'm not looking to go backwards, I want to just go forward, so, uh, like I said, right now, my championship fight is Angela Hill, that's what I'm focused on, and, you know, after next Saturday, after I fight, after I fight, you know, I don't think about, you know, I don't think about, you know, what's next. So, you, you know, going over to Mexico, and being able to represent uh, from your heritage, uh, how does that feel? Is it exciting uh, being there? Because you know, when you come out, they're gonna go, they're gonna go crazy. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even Mexican. I'm Latina. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. So uh, it's really cool that I come here and they're like all accepting of me, and a lot of people already know me. This is my third time here in Mexico, and uh, I know that you know, the fans will be at my side here in Mexico, large, you know, on a large part. So it's going to be cool. This is going to be my biggest fight uh, with like 20,000 fans. So it's going to be, you know, a tad bit scary at one point, but I love the, the pressure. I love the crowd. The louder they are, the more it pushes me. Uh, you know, even if it's in a negative way, it just uh, it motivates me to do well in the form. Yeah, I, I mean, I could imagine, you know, and, and again, you know, watching you and seeing what type of uh, person, but what, more than that, what type of competitor you are. Um, I'm sure you will thrive on that energy. And when they announce the name Angela Hill and they announce the name Tisha Torres, I don't think Puerto Rican, I don't think that's going to make a bit of difference. I think they're going to love you. And, you know, a lot of fighters get that type of uh, um, pressure, let's say, uh, support. It's, it's a big card. Um, the heavyweight title's on the line. So obviously, a lot of people are going to be. Uh, buying that paper, everyone's going to be watching. Um, that energy that you get, that that nervous feeling, it can be used as a weapon, 
or it can be a hindrance. People can let the nerves get them. Um, how have you dealt with that before? Do you think that would be a problem, or is that something that is really going to empower you? No, nah, there's always a bit of nervousness before a fight of excitement, butterflies, you know. I'm doing what I love and I'm on the biggest stage in the world. Uh, it, it, for me, it's never really a hindrance, you know. I know I'm going in there and what I have to do. I know she has the same two hands, the same two feet as me. She's not God. So um, anything can happen, like we've said. But um, I, I'm, I go in there prepared and confident, you know, believing that I'm going to win. Well, and people I, I, that I've spoken to, um... You know, because you've had decision wins, um, would say, well, you know, Tisha, she doesn't possess power to finish, or she's not a finisher on the ground. And I, I mean, I, I would disagree, man. I mean, you know, like I said, my experience taught me a lot. And so I, I just can't believe anybody would sleep on any of your game, whether it's a ground game or, or striking. I, that would be ludicrous. I hope they do. I hope that that's what they're doing. Um, because uh, that would be a mistake for sure. Um, do you have family coming to watch? Uh, my brother is going to come out here and be here next week. Um, but that's it, though, family wise. It's coming. Uh, the rest will, you know, watch from the States. Oh, that's that's going to be exciting. And, you know, we're going to be watching. And, um, you know, we're going to be supporting. Um, you know, again, I have to thank you for everything that you've allowed me to do. Uh, Tisha, you are you are uh, a class act, but you're genuine. You're real, and I, you know, hats off to you for that. Um, would you like to give any shout outs to any sponsor? Um, I have a whole bunch this uh, time around. I want to thank you guys about MMA for, you know, uh, being willing to sponsor me. I'm such a cage. And uh, being a part of Team Tiny. And to uh, my main sponsors, uh, Head Rush, Grip That, Infinite Irons. I have so many, sorry. Uh, That's okay. Irons, uh, I want you to say, I want you to say every one of them that you're able to remember. Don't worry about it, it's important. Got a paper right here, one second. There you go. Oh, it's so much easier. Okay, so I have you guys, of course. Head Rush, Hayabusa, Grip That, Infinite Irons, Fresh Meal Plan, uh, Paul Hydrix has been a sponsor of mine for a while now. And then I actually got some ones out of uh, Mexico, Security Mexico, Trust Group, AMB Brands, and Marquise Hotel. And then I have uh, Tops, it's an autograph company, uh, my chiropractor, uh, Boxer for Wellness, and uh, NT Marlboro, Derek Allen. So uh, I have so much support this fight. I'm so excited to you know represent you guys and everybody who supported me. And just for ready to fight. I'm done thinking about Angela. I've been thinking about her for the past four months. And I just want to have my hand raised and go back home, relax, and take a little vacation. And any message to the fans or maybe to uh, Angela herself? Uh, anything you'd like to say? My opponent? Nope. <laughs> I just want to see you, Kate side. And uh, to the fans, thank you for following me. Uh, thanks for being a fan of the sport. You know, without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. And I hope my fights entertain you. Tisha, again, thank you so much. Um, Team Tiny is there. The tornado has entered Mexico, and uh, I'm excited to watch this fight. Uh, thank you for your time, and best of luck. Uh, you know I'll be bobbing and weaving and sweating and screaming when I watch the fight. Um, so thank you, Tisha, so much. Thank you, guys. Much love. Talk yeah. to you soon.